Who am I? My friends call me Merle B. And I'm so old for that. I cherish all of those things. Even the names that I'm called that are not speakable on this show. Because those do give me courage and strength to keep going forward. I am better known as the widow the wife slash widow of civil rights leader Medgar Evers. Uh, I am Merle Evers Williams. I am at a point in my life now where I take deep breaths and I say to myself, I'm tired, I want a break. I want peace, I want comfort. And then there's always that little voice that says, they aren't for you because there's still so much work to be done. So much work to be done in the area of justice and equality, of building good communities of training our children about the history, the role that they can play if they prepare themselves. And in the words of my grandmother, I find myself saying, and I am a believer, here I am, Lord, send me. That's also the title of um, an old spiritual In a few months, I will reach my 85th birthday. I'm proud of it. <laughs> I'm still standing, even though I have to use a cane occasionally. I wonder if that cane is for balance, or if it is to be used to hit someone over the head who refuses to accept the history of our country and to work positively for change. And I'm particularly interested in our young people because that's our future. If we don't infuse them with the knowledge of the past, the passion of the past and today, and encourage them to use the knowledge that they get from all sources to work for good. What use is it to be around, you know, to complain? Sure, we all love to complain, but once the complaining is done, what do we do? What steps do we take to make things better for ourselves and for our children? I'm at that point and I have been for a very long time. I am so thankful for my life. And when I say that, that encompasses the hardships, the sorrows. And it reminds me of something that Medgar said to me in one of our last times together and talking. We both knew something was going to happen. And I told him, I quote, I can't live without you. I can't make it without you. And there was silence. And he embraced me and he said, Merle, you are stronger than you think you are. I did not believe it until I was tested. I knew that I had to be strong for our three children. I wanted to be strong because he believed in me when I didn't believe in myself. 
I had to be strong because, as Medgar said, this is our country. What are you going to do about it? I went through both museums one day. The mixed emotions that I had about the two separate buildings was put to rest. Because my fear was separate yet equal, or separate and unequal, whichever. I went through the Mississippi Museum, and I was moved by what I saw. It has a completely different flavor than the other museum, which represents strength, horror, being able to overcome and to move forward. So I have put to rest my concern about two separate buildings because they both serve a different purpose, but they also serve the same side by side. If anyone wants to be inspired to do more and better, if anyone needs and wants to be inspired to build a good future for their children, I would strongly suggest visiting these two museums in Mississippi. And I wasn't sure that I'd ever be able to say that. I'm fearful about where my country is today. I'm fearful about the direction in which we're going. I don't want to live to see hatred take us over again. So, you look around, what instruments of peace do we have? And I can strongly endorse the Mississippi Two Museums. A place of learning, a place of feeling and letting one's emotions out, a place where one, and particularly our children, can be creative in their thinking and planning for the future. I'm just enamored with what these two concepts and buildings have brought together. Two or three weeks ago, I would not have said that. I would not have said that. But upon visiting, all of those needs to be human came forth, and if it worked with a tough old cookie like me, who has been beaten up, certainly emotionally, if I can feel the hope of going in and learning and coming back out of these two places a better person, then my gratitude to all who have helped to build it, and my gratitude to all who will get people here to see our futures and our children. I emphasize that our future is in our children. They will be exposed to the good, the bad, and the ugly. And it really will be left up to them and their parents to help to guide them in the direction that we hope they will go. One where people are considered human beings, where there is a difference amongst all of us, but there's also a commonality. Do we live in hatred? Or do we build in understanding and compassion. I choose the last, and I think most people do. The most important person in setting my thoughts and my heart was Medgar Evers. I could not understand how he embraced goodwill and love over hatred. And I said to him once, I hate those people. 
He gave me a look that I still remember. <laughs> it was not pleasant. And he said to me, don't drop beneath your humanness. I'll never forget that. Don't drop beneath your humanness. One of the few times I think that we didn't talk to each other for a while, because I was livid at him for telling me that. I saw what was happening to him in the sense of how tired he was, yet how determined he was, how he could overlook the anger to move forward in pursuit of good. And I told him I could never do it. He told me, you won't know until you try. He was right. There are times I still walk that thin line and quickly pull myself back from going over into the other. His words and his deeds and his belief in humankind still move me to this day to do what I feel, what he did, and what I taught was right. I, I wasn't sure I could even pull myself together to come to this opening, yet I knew I had to. And I looked at the people on the stage and those in the audience, some who years ago would not have spoken to each other, who would have been at war with each other. And I said, this is my Mississippi. We are coming together. We are working for the future. And those who wish to keep it down, I hope, I trust, I pray, are in a minority. If they are not, I hope those of us who feel as Medgar Evers did and as he lived, that there's an opportunity for a bright future here in America and abroad. So when my shoulders slump and I say no more, there's always that little voice that says, not yet, still too much to be done. So you pull up like that war horse and throw your shoulders back and you say, here I come. <laughs>